Topic six. Good evening, everyone. The microphone is working. Yeah, good. Um, and warm, very warm welcome to Philly Joe's Club. Uh, it's an event organized by Astonishing Evenings and Estonian World, an English language magazine. My name is Silver Tambor. I'm the editor in chief of Estonian World and one of the organizers tonight. So the debate is called The Future of Tallinn, Local Election Debate 2021. It's actually a fourth time we are organizing pre-election debate. Uh, we've had it before the last election, local election, before last uh, parliament election, and before the European parliament election. And tonight we've invited here uh, representatives of all major parties. Uh, so we'll start, we'll start from here. Um, I'll briefly introduce them. Uh, everyone has been already introduced also uh, under the event, so if you want to go into more details of what they've done in the past 30 or 20 years, you can look at there, or 10 years. But starting from here, Raymond Kaljulaid, representing the Social Democrats, and also a mayoral candidate. Um, he started his career at the Centre Party, but quit the party, um, I think it was before, after the last parliament election in protest of forming a coalition, because the party formed the coalition with ECRA. Right. Peter Pertelpere, he is from, um, he is representing the Reform Party, joined with them quite recently, I think this spring, has lived in Stockholm, Brussels, really pro a proponent, uh, you're, you're a big fan of smart cities, what you call, and you, I'm sure you will explain pre uh, later what, what you mean. Urmas Reinsalo, been in politics uh, for the past 20 years, uh, first as a member of Respublika, then as Isama, and so obviously representing Isama here tonight. Um, he has been also minister for many times, uh, recently foreign minister of Estonia. Suleiha Ismailova. Uh, Suleiha Ismailova is representing the Green Party. Uh, she's been polit in politics also now for quite a while, I think five, six years at least, um, and currently is the leader of the uh, Green Party. Uh, Zuleika is also a um, proponent of, of equal, more equal society, as I understand. Uh, also for marriage equality, meaning uh, gender neutral marriages. Um, and she's also a mother of three children. York. Thank you. And uh, next, uh, Joachim Helenius, representing Estonia 200. Also, kind of expat yourself, though I understand you have lived in Estonia for the best part of the last 30 years. Uh, so uh, now I recently became an Estonian citizen, originally from Finland, um, educated at Cambridge University, lived in China and some many other countries. Uh, you can find a detailed description under the event. And has mainly worked as a, as a venture oh, at the Trigon Capital, which is a venture capitalist fund. Is that correct description? Close enough. Close enough. Okay, sorry. Uh, and um, obviously representing Estonia 200, which is also a relatively new party. Um, it's been party since the last general election. Vladimir Svet is representing the center party, the party that has been power in Tallinn for the last, I believe, 16, 16 years. Right. 16 years in power, and Vladimir has been also, has, you have been head, the head of the city center, administrative district, and cur currently you're the head of Lasnama district, which is the largest um, administrative district in Tallinn, approximately 100,000 people, I believe. 120,000 people. Right, 120,000. Uh, and, and predominantly it's a Russian, Estonian Russian dominated district, right? You can tell it that way, yeah. Yeah, okay, population wise. And um, <laughs> there you go. And finally, uh, Georg Kirsberg is representing ECRA tonight, Estonian Conservative People's Party. Um, by the way, this is the first time ECRA re representative is uh, also represented in our, one of our debates every time we have invited, and no one came. So finally, ECRA has also sent a representative here. <laughs> And finally, tonight's uh, debate is moderated by Joao Ray, um, sitting right next to me uh, here. Uh, very glad to invite again here Joao, who's also, who has um, moderated those debates before. 
every time. Jo is originally from Portugal. He uh, has lived in, in Estonia now for over 10 years, married to Estonian lady, has two children, I believe. Uh, very active in the startup scene. Uh, he mentors them, invests and helps them by, with, with his advice. And you're currently also running your own startup, which is called EID, I believe. Right. Right. So, I will uh, hand over now to Joe. Just briefly, what's the time schedule tonight? We will have uh, the debate first. First, we have an hour. Joe will ask questions from each candidate. Then we'll have a short break, 10 minutes. After that, we'll continue with the part two where we take uh, questions via Slido platform. So the Slido code is 443161. You can ask questions. Uh, I, I already saw a lot of people already have asked questions. So I'm not sure we can ma we will manage to ask uh, all of them, but we'll try our best. Um, and uh, also, uh, you can. The, the, we also have online stream. That stream through Astonishing Evenings and Estonian Worlds um, Facebook pages. So obviously, everyone who's watching us at home, um, Slido would be also a good platform for you. And I um, hope you enjoy the event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Silver. And uh, first of all, thank you to all the candidates for agreeing to be here. Uh, as, a, as an expat myself, I'm always amazed by how, how welcoming it is and how good it is to live in a country where we can do this uh, so easily and freely and ask you questions directly. Uh, for expats, one of the reasons we're doing this, and we've been doing this for a while, is that this is one of the few elections where uh, EU citizens and uh, foreigners who live here can actually vote. Um, and the first time we did this, I did it because I was kind of lost myself. I couldn't really tell the difference between some of the parties or who to vote for. So I just decided to call up some people that I know and, and talk to Silver and get this together. So I'm really thankful for all of you uh, to being here. And uh, one note, uh, just before we get started, uh, on uh, gender equality or gender balance, uh, we did try to get, so our, our first policy was to get the mayor candidates to be on here on the stage. I think we have three mayor candidates on stage, uh, which is pretty good. Um, and, uh, and having them not being available for scheduling conflicts, we asked them to send someone, and, um, and this is the panel we have. So uh, we did our best to get uh, a gender balance, but it's not always possible. But having said that, uh, let's move on with the show. We have one hour, so I already asked you to keep your answers brief so we can actually get on to the issues. And the first question I have to ask uh, from all of you is that, um, you know, Tallinn as a city and its place in Europe and the world, and what's your vision of Tallinn as it connects to the expats? So is Tallinn a city that is welcoming foreigners to live here? If so, why? So what's your vision for that? Uh, we know that the tech sector is booming. There's a lot of expats that are here working the tech sector. Do they come here because of Tallinn or do they come here despite of Tallinn? Uh, now, I'm not, you're not God. You know, you can't change the weather. That's fine. Uh, I hope that's not one of your promises. But so what are some of your visions for Tallinn as a city to uh, attract or not uh, expats? And do you keep, uh, you know, do you keep that in mind when making your policies? So, what kind of ideas does your party and do you put forward to make Tallinn a welcoming city? And I'm going to start with Vladimir, who's uh, the current in the current uh, power. Yes. Well, Tallinn is definitely an open city and should remain one. Um, well, from the Soviet times, it happened in a way that we are a bilingual city, as almost half of the population of Tallinn, its mother tongue is not Estonian. It's surprise Russian. Um, so I, I will refer to these people as Russian speakers, but of course we know that there are a lot of Ukrainians, Belarusians, people from the Caucasus, and etc. So I think already this fact creates a perfect base for us to become a city open to the expat community, open to people of different cultures, no matter what is the current political situation. You cannot change the fact that here in Tallinn we are used to speaking different languages. Our attitude towards them may be different, but in the end we all know that um, it will live. And I think in general every Estonian acknowledges that Estonia is a cool place to live in, in quite a big world where Estonia is a small country. So we know that without English language 
um, we cannot survive in this kind of wor world. And the more hostile this world becomes uh, around Europe and inside Europe, uh, the, the more we need this kind of connection. So we have the communication skills, we have the experience of um, a multicultural community. I don't see no reasons why we should not be in a expat-friendly open city. So in your view, we're, we're good, we're doing No, well. um, I think we're moving in the right direction, but right. there is a lot to be done. But I think we will get yeah. to the concrete steps right. a bit later. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. Raymond? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think there's two sides to that coin. One of them has to do with our economy and uh, the fact that, you know, Estonia being such a small country, it's, it's pretty difficult to run an international company here uh, employing only locals. So you're going to need to bring in people with, uh, you know, very specific skills uh, from abroad. And, and that needs to be, uh, you know, smooth and, 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 and easy to do for us to be competitive. So that's the money side. And the second, uh, I think that's also important, if, if you look at capitals, uh, capital cities in the world, what kind of makes them different from uh, maybe smaller cities uh, or smaller places is the vibrancy and the fact that different people of different backgrounds and different cultures kind of uh, meet and, and, and mix and blend in those cities. So that makes, us, that makes the capitals uh, interesting and, and an interesting uh, place to study or, or just grow up in or work or live in. So, so for sure, uh, uh, that, that needs to be done. Where we are at this stage, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say that we're doing like terribly bad, uh, that we're completely inhospitable to people coming from, from abroad. Um, there are specific issues uh, like in other Eastern European cities uh, to do with racism and and um, generally people feeling unsafe uh, in in Tallinn, uh, which has unfortunately it's gone up in in the in the past years. Those are problems of infrastructure and and and, and etc. You know, as I think I, I would agree that, that we are uh, we're not moving in a, in a terribly bad situation in, or right. direction at right. the moment. But just yeah, and uh, Partal, I want to get your your answer, but also what would make what would make someone come here as opposed to going to Helsinki or Riga or Stockholm? Is this, is this my turn? That's your turn, yes. Hi, and welcome to Tallinn, everybody. <laughs> uh, you've made a very bold choice uh, and the best choice possible. Welcome to Estonia. Uh, I think that people are attracted to the Estonian brand, let's say, the highly digital country. And this all is true, and it's a very promising uh, place to be. The urban environment, Tallinn, these are local elections. I think, I think people are attracted here despite, regardless of what Tallinn as an urban environment is. We have all these digital services, and it's wonderful to, to do e-voting and, and, and everything e online without going anywhere. That is great, but this is the state, this is the government. Um, I mean, it's a small country, so it's easy to get these things mixed up, but the municipal services, that's another different area. And there, I think we'll be coming back to this, expat services and such, because you mentioned, I've, uh, Silver mentioned I've lived in Stockholm. There, my job has been and still is, I'm a management consultant and an urban strategist. So I've been advising cities and countries how to provide services for expats. Uh, how many expats do we have here? Can you raise your hand, please? Just as an indication. The whole oh, it's room. a full house. <laughs> now, now, please, hold your hand up. Please, uh, those who know what the International House Estonia is, raise your hand. Uh, there's a bit less hands. So it's services, thank you. So it's services like this that the government, national government, as well as the municipal government, the city, needs to offer. So it's, it comes down to simple stuff. Kindergarten, information, and services in English, for example. So, to be short, uh, the urban environment is something that could be a much bigger factor. Tallinn is a small, cozy, nice place to live compared to Helsinki, Riga, and the like. If only 
the urban environment would be cleaner, safer, more hospitable, safer for children. The whole bicycle lane thing, we're not supposed to talk about it, but it is a huge thing. <laughs> now we will get thing. to it. We will so get to it. So if we really, I mean, imagine November, it's cold, it's dark, it's slushy, etc. Now if then, in the afternoon at four o'clock, you feel that this city works for me, the bus, the tram, the bicycle lane, this and that works for me, then Tallinn will have used its potential. It's not being used today. I, I want to pick up on something you, you mentioned to, to go to, to Urmas, which is people come here despite of Tallinn, and I think a lot of them come attracted to the Estonia brands. But Estonia is not Tallinn. I mean, the Estonia brand is not Tallinn, right? Go, no, think, go to Tartu. It's a wonderful place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think, uh, Urmas, you know, you've been, you've been uh, a minister. Uh, you have experience from this Estonia as a nation brand and, and clearly a country punching above its weight. But I think for Tallinn, it, it doesn't show. So what, what's missing? What do you think? Uh, what, what's your vision for Tallinn as it comes down to this? Good night to everybody. Uh, I would say that uh, Tallinn now is facing more problems than uh, Estonia <laughs> as such. And um, I would like to pick up three uh, core uh, elements. The one thing we need to understand, as, we are, uh, as you are aware of the situation in Estonia, that actually in, uh, in Tallinn, that uh, Tallinn is one of the most segregated uh, towns in Europe, we find. And this is actually a very grand problem, not only to Tallinn, its future, its small children uh, future, but uh, uh, universally for Estonia. Uh, that, uh, and we need to cut that segregation, and it means uh, one half of Tallinn population is uh, Russian speaking uh, uh, by, by and large, and one half are Estonians. We need to pass also to the Italian educational system uh, uh, education in Estonia, as in kindergartens and as in schools. Secondly, Tallinn is lacking now migration policy. If you're looking to the Tallinn uh, uh, and the Saab uh, element of that should be Tallinn expat uh, policy. And if you look to the English website or Finnish website, this is great that we are having uh, in Tallinn official website, but actually there is not any kind of information of that policy how uh, town uh, is uh, enhancing uh, and uh, helping uh, the expats to integrate, to find uh, the kindergarten places, uh, some practical issues uh, to husbands, wives, etc., etc. And this is an uh, issue where the town needs also to look an active as a people who are coming here to make some extra uh, to their own lives, to the families, to the companies, but also and to the third point? Urban, uh, urban community. And the third point is, uh, to my understanding, uh, Tallinn is not using uh, fully a vision of, uh, of being international business uh, town. I mean, there is a great uh, potential what Tallinn uh, city government now is not using, speaking about the uh, red tape, uh, about the corruption, about the enhancing uh, direct foreign investments also uh, by city measures. And there is, I think, great potential to use. To my understanding, in, in our region, the urban areas are competing between e each other more than actually the countries. Mm. All right. Uh, Zuzu? If you look at this stage tonight, you will see that uh, basically only men. You, you spoke about uh, that, uh, this gender equality, but actually um, I am the only uh, candidate, woman uh, candidate uh, running for uh, mayor. And I think this is one of the problems that is, it's, um, this leadership is too masculine. Me as a mother, I see the problems uh, we're having uh, every day uh, by, uh, when moving from place to place, uh, uh, strolling, uh, uh, riding a bike. Uh, it's unsafe for children. So when we speak about Tallinn uh, being a hospital place for, for expats, uh, I think that um, it's, it doesn't matter uh, if you're local or you uh, come from other places. It, it has to be safe and we have to start building this town for people, not for cars. And we had a debate today earlier where we uh, met with uh, some other candidates too. It was organized by, uh, by these archi architects and uh, they said... Uh, 
they pointed out the same problems that our city is too, uh, it's made for cars, it's, uh, it's uh, made by men behind the wheel looking out from the car, you know. So we need a city uh, for pedestrians, for children, for uh, elderly people, safe. Uh, I think that we should um, uh, bring down the uh, car speed by 30 uh, kilometers uh, per hour in the whole of the city. And we uh, have to start investing more in uh, bike lanes, in, uh, in safe uh, pedestrian walkways, uh, and not so much uh, in big, big car roads. All right. And, and FYI, I think it's around 40% of candidates are women, although you're the only one who's a candidate to mayor, but 40% of the, the lists are women. So we're so making vote some for women. <laughs> That's good. Um, all right. And then... Uh, Joachim, what, what car do you drive? Uh, I drive an old classic, so <laughs> right. uh, uh, it falls into its own category. But, but so. seriously, no. So what's your uh, so what's your vision to attract uh, some of these uh, foreign talent to? Well, to, uh, to let talent? me just uh, because my answer will uh, will depend on on who I uh, what the party I represent. So nobody knows what Estonia 200 is. Estonia 200 in sort of a European context is pro is a mix of the uh, realistic wing of in German German terms the realistic wing of the Green Party and the Free Democrats, which are a very business-friendly liberal party. That pretty much describes who we are. So in terms of uh, what we stand for and, and, and what we, we would like to see uh, uh, for uh, expats uh, here in, in Tallinn, it's first and foremost an understanding of why is it somebody comes here. There are two reasons why foreigners settle in Tallinn. One is because they find themselves an Estonian girlfriend and uh, the other one is because uh, they're offered a really good and interesting job. Those are the only reasons. Um, nobody comes to Tallinn because Tallinn is an exciting city or, mm. uh, you know, because they've always wanted to go and live in Tallinn. Uh, <laughs> no, they, uh, they, they only come for a, a reason which tends to be a good job. So what do we need to do? We need to make it attractive um, for uh, uh, people from abroad who have skills that are needed here in Estonia to come and live in Estonia. We need to help the local companies do this. Uh, we need to look at how they are taxed. Uh, we need to look at, uh, you know, what, for example, is it really necessary to, uh, to have a very, very high social security tax and put no limits on it. So if you, if you need to hire, a, you're a rising, uh, fast-growing company, you, you want to hire foreign IT experts, experts, but you can't afford to because the social taxes are simply too high. So you know, we're looking to, to uh, uh, set up a, an environment that would be welcoming and, and that is understanding of why people come here. But, but some of those yeah. things are not up to the city. No, I, I understand that. Right. But, but I mean, the city I uh, has to play its own role it. in this. Right. And you can't talk about the city on its yeah. own cannot attract foreigners to come right. and live here. And so I, I agree, kind of people come here despite of Tallinn, right? People come here despite right. of, of, of what Tallinn is, which is a small is. Yeah. but very, very nice city, yeah. but not something, yeah. it's not New York, it's not Absolutely, London, yeah. it's not a city that attracts people in their own right. It's not healthy. Everybody, it's not, it's everybody, not everybody in, 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 in the politics here in Tallinn, but also nationally in Estonia needs to understand that we are competing for people. Exactly. For us, for an educated person yes. to come and live here is a fantastic gain. Mm -hmm. uh, politicians in Estonia tend to talk about foreigners moving to Estonia as if we're doing them a favor by letting them move here. That's not the case. They, they are doing us a favor right. by coming and live, to, to, to live here, work here, and bring their skill sets. Exactly, here. and that's, that's also the message that I want to pass. Like Estonia is, or Tallinn is definitely competing, not just with Tartu, but competing with Helsinki, Stockholm, Riga, Vilnius, for sure, who I think has taken a leading spot in in the sort of what Estonia brand uh, used to be. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so I think there's a, a mismatch between the Estonia brand and what Tallinn is doing. No offense, Vladimir. And uh, Georg, uh, finally. So what's, uh, listening to, to Joachim and his promise to bring more people here, how does Ekre see this? And again, thank you for uh, participating for the first time. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, hi, folks, uh, and hi for everyone. Uh, and thank you for having me. Uh, me, myself, I have lived for some years in Germany, so I know what it means to be a foreigner in a foreign country. 
or at least in Germany, it's very nice to live because all the people are very nice and happy. And I hope that you are treated here the same well. Uh, one thing I want to, to I want to say to you is uh, that our Conservative Party is not at all hostile against the foreigners. Yeah, because maybe you are misled by the aggressive leftist propaganda, which <laughs> which tries to to show uh, for you uh, such a, a negative picture from us. But it's not true at all. We are friendly against everyone who wants to come here and to contribute to our society. But of course, as you know, with some kind of immigration, there can be problems with the asylum industry, with the Islamic invasion, with the hybrid war. Yeah? And we are heavily against such kind of immigration and also against the forced migration from Brussels with the immigration quotes. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, concerning the free market uh, migration and people who want to come and uh, study and live and work here, uh, we have nothing against that. So, so, so Pierre, just to clarify, so that means that there's, there's a difference in, in the types of migration. If they're from Europe or from the European Union, the free movement of people, you're okay with that. Your party is okay with that to come to yes, Thailand. Yes, our, our party is okay and, with and that. And regarding migration policies from outside of Europe. Yes, as long as the migration is in accordance with our job market. Mm. I mean, we cannot accept markets if there is not a vacancy in the job market. Yeah? Mm. But otherwise, yes, we can. Uh, and now, uh, what could the Estonia do to make a more better place for the expats, uh, expats like the Mr. Helenio said, they only come here, or mainly they come here to work. Yeah? And so we should uh, try to build up more workplaces and startups. Yeah? He also mentioned the women. So no. <laughs> yes, what's I, your take on, on that? I know that, our, I know that our women are very beautiful. Yeah? But, uh, but they, but they beside for that, yes, the, the economy and the startups, and I am already involved with uh, startup uh, fundraising companies, which also do the campaigns uh, outside of Estonia. So to build up more startups and to bring in more talented people to develop the startup uh, is actually the only thing we can do, and our party tries to do it as well as we can. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So I think, you know, we kind of covered some of the vision or, you know, the how to welcome some expats here or your vision to, to that. Um, I, I want to get into some of the, the hot topics that are going on at the moment, which obviously have to do with, with the green policies that some of you, uh, some of your parties are proposing, the current debate regarding the bike lanes that were made kind of seemingly in a rush, maybe because of the elections, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and, and also, and also, also I, I saw that in a lot of your parties, there's a lot of promises for new tram lines, new transportation systems, 15 minute cities and all that. So my question is having all of that into one, one play, how do you pay for all of this? So if you have all of these transportation, uh, renovation issues, how do you pay for it? And, and regarding the bike lanes, uh, what's your personal policy or preference, are they the ones that were just made, are they here to stay? Is it better than what we had before? Uh, would you do something to change them, improve them? So kind of like green policy and transportation all in one, all in one go. And I will leave you for last this time, if, that, if that's okay, so you get a chance to, uh, uh, to, to do that. So Partal, maybe we can start with you. The 15-minute city, as you probably know, is a, is a wonderful concept that was popular even before the corona pandemic. So within a 15-minute radius, walking or cycling, you have all the necessary stuff, school amenities, uh, jobs, and transit stations to, to, to transit you to other 15-minute um, areas. So in the Reform Party's program, which this year has been written uh, very much by architects and urban strategists as, as such as myself, the 15-minute city as a con concept is, is strongly presented there. It's not merely a chapter, it's permeating all, all other chapters, as is another urban concept, the 880 uh, city, which means that a city needs to be safe, priority, safe and comfortable and functional to an eight-year-old 
as well as an AT year old. So if you cover those two, you will have covered all of the spectres. Uh, bike lanes are right front and center in our strategy, and it's quite simple, really. Uh, in Tallinn, what you have is a, a bicycle strategy, 2018 to 27. And it, it's, it's, been, it's been shelved for the past four years until now. Yes, in a rush, we've seen a development which is better than before, which was nothing. I, for one, know because I cycle. It, you may have seen a cargo bike outside. That's mine. Me and the wife uh, and our three kids, we cycle all year round, including this winter with minus 15. It's wonderful. The kids are silent. I highly recommend it. <laughs> so, yes. So, uh, um, bicycle lanes need to be constructed. These are here to stay, but they need to be strictly done according to that cycling strategy. And this stuff that you see has not been done according to that. So, uh, cycling is here to stay. There's no question about it. If you look at Helsinki and Stockholm and Copenhagen and other Nordic cities, why? Because they're innovative, they're great, they're smart, they're in the same cultural realm, they're cold, they're dark, and cities, more than countries, are competing for talents. And if you look at Helsinki, for example, Helsinki is putting, as are those other cities, they're putting everything into play to attract international tech talent. For example, uh, Helsinki held a campaign called the City as a Service. So software as a, ser as a service, city as a service, where they flew in uh, for a week, 10 selected uh, tech talents, and they showed them around, all the future uh, potential employers who paid half of the trip, and then the city itself as well. Look what we have here. We have the world's most functioning city, which is their strategy for their own citizens. So the urban environment is a competitive factor that other cities are using, so everything is put into, into play in this very highly competitive... Bartel, I'm not going to let you get away yeah. without answering the, the point about how Sorry. do you pay for it. So the 15-minute city is a be beautiful concept. I, I, yes. you know, obviously, if you do the 15-minute city, you don't need as many cars. But how do you pay for some of the projects you're proposing, like the extension of some of the tram lines? These uh, investments need to be made into... Sorry, this is my third debate today. I, I, I missed that. Uh, Exactly the way the city is, uh, the city transportation, public the transportation is, is, uh, is funded today, but the question is where to put these investments. So it, the, the public transport needs to be data-based. You don't need to buy new buses, for example, for the sake of buying new buses to show that, look how many new buses we've bought, mm. which they have done. Mm. Instead, they need to open new lines. They need to invest into data and do other things similar to what Tartu, for example, again, has done. They have a data-based, new, reformed uh, public transport. So you don't need to have that colossal new investments, and where you do need to have them, the EU will offer a helping hand. It's, it has been, and it will be, a question of priorities. All right. Raymond? Yeah, uh, well, let's begin with the money part, because the politicians always uh, try to avoid that. Uh, especially before the elections. So um, when, you, when you look at uh, spending on road construction and in, uh, investment in, in new roads in Tallinn for the past, uh, let's say, 10 years, you see that a uh, majority of the money goes into uh, these pretty expensive uh, big projects that basically uh, make it easier to uh, get from point A to point B in a car. So you would have these big, um, you know, multi-story intersections that are built or tunnels near the airport. You probably know that uh, um, the road, Ready um, Day by the seaside, which has some like 12 lanes or I don't know, 24 lanes. It's an you know, amazing, I think it has the most lanes uh, um, ever uh, that's been built in, in the world. It's, it's the widest road. Um, uh, and, uh, and anyways, so, so this is where the money is gone. And, and all that it does really, uh, it just promotes uh, more car usage. So more, more people buy cars uh, and the streets get more congested and people are more unhappy about it. And that's what the statistics show. I mean, we have a uh, decline in people using uh, public transport. Uh, we don't really have uh, any you know, big pickup in people using bicycles, uh, but we have a huge number of cars um, in the city. And every day, something like 50,000 or 60,000 cars 
drive into the city from the suburbs. Despite the fact yeah. that the, the transportation is free. Yeah, and then when you look at like plans for the for the next uh, four or five years, which I, I'm sure uh, Vladimir will speak about as as great plans for the city and, and a vision that the mayor has for for Tallinn to be a green capital in Europe, it's a hundred million uh, euro tunnel uh, below the airport, below the runways for cars. That's going to make us like you know amazingly green. It's it's the greenest project I've heard. It's to like dig up airport runways and build a huge you know, tunnel for 100 million for cars. And that's, that's great, that's really green, isn't it, right? Uh, so, so you don't really have to, um, uh, you don't really have to invite a bicycle, uh, invent a bicycle here. What you really need to do is you need to take and probably put a stop to these kind of crazy ideas of 100, millions, you know, 100 million euros for a tunnel below the airport and all these you know, overpasses and bypasses and, and ring roads and whatever uh, that the city is currently planning to do and invest that into the existing streets that we've got and reconstruct them so that they are safe and comfortable for everyone. So you can you use the, you know, that's... I'm sorry if that was a long answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but but that's 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 the gist of it. I mean, it's it's not very. But it, regarding the existing bike lanes, yeah. they're here to stay. No, change? no, they're not. They're not. Uh, the existing uh, the existing bike lanes um, is unfortunately it's a it's a pattern that happened and they fooled me as well. And I was in city government at the time in 2017 when they passed the strategy. I was like, great, and I was telling voters, this is great. We're gonna for four years we're gonna build bicycle lanes. We're gonna have a whole network. It's gonna be great. And then, of course, nothing got done, absolutely, for the four years, except for this really nice PDF that just sits somewhere on the city's website. And, you know, it's not just me saying, all the experts that made the strategy are saying that nothing's been done. And then uh, what happened, uh, and politically speaking, the problem is that when I was working for the city and I, and I was talking to these people in charge of uh, building roads and reconstructing roads, they would say, you know, this is something that like the 1% of these hipsters in Kalamaya, they care about it, but nobody else cares about it. Everyone wants to drive a car. And what happened is you got all these electric scooters now on the pedestrian uh, sidewalks. And now you've got like grannies and people with small children, uh, you know, scared to death because they actually are pretty dangerous. I mean, if, you know, God forbid, um, you know, a small child would have an accident with an electric scooter, that's, that's pretty dramatic. So, so instead of like 1% or 3% of hipsters being unsatisfied with the bike lanes, now you've got like 80% of people in Tallinn going, this has to stop, you gotta do something about this. So they made these big red, uh, you know, crappy uh, bike lanes that, you know, in, in places, because I, I ride them, and it's like in places they like drive pedestrians in your path. It's like, it's like they're, they're trying to make you into a, a, you know, a weapon. Like they're trying to make you into a, a, somebody that, you know, mows them down. And, and, and I don't know why they do that. I don't want to do that. I don't want to threaten any uh, grannies when I'm, when I'm bicycling. So no, we got to replace that. We got, we got to, there's actually the strategy is solid, the, the plan. It's just right. you got to pick so it up and build it. it. We gotta yeah, yeah, we got to right. replace it, of course. And and, and according to you, it's Bolt's fault that this got. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's I'm not. Kidding, I'm kidding. It's good. It's no, good. Bolt has. I think is. You know, he, the, kidding, uh, good intentions. Sure. Intentions. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, Urmas, I think it was five years ago. We had the same question about bikes and you know bikes versus cars in the debate, and you were very much pro car at the time, and bikes weren't your thing. Have you changed your minds over the years, or you're still, you know, bikes are overrunning the city, and and bike lanes are not needed. Have you changed your mind? What do you think? Uh, <laughs> uh, so You're well, running for mayor, so... Yeah, 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 no, no. So first, uh, as uh, Joachim so uh, generously describes his party about the German political scene, so I belong to the European People's Party family. So in a German sense, it means CDU uh, uh, is our sister party uh, of our, my party. Speaking about... First, you asked uh, the question from where comes the money, mm -hmm. the most important question actually. And um, the first thing, uh, when I started to run to the mayor's post, I, I called a group of business people uh, to form a certain uh, plan of economic growth, uh, Tallinn as an international business uh, city. And uh, we established a plan how to improve uh, the rise of GDP in Tallinn, larger urban area, where actually is, um, around 60% of Estonian GDP is produced. And I think, uh, I, I, I do feel that this is actually also the core element uh, of uh, uh, economic growth of uh, Estonia altogether. Secondly, speaking about the um, uh, 
uh, bicycles. Uh, I fully support the concept that uh, the uh, bicyclist is the best uh, friend of car drivers because then there, there is a less traffic uh, in car roads, actually. They are not enemies, they are friends, actually. Well, when we are looking about the uh, situation today, uh, yes, I fully agree that the bicycle strategy needs to be fully implemented, and this is a fiasco, what uh, town government has done, and this is, uh, from the accidents, we, we see that this is actually uh, dangerous uh, for the people, as uh, pedestrians, but also bicyclists. The secondly, what I believe, the reality is that uh, the strategic goal should be uh, that there should be different options uh, to people to, to also to use public transport, but also to use bicycles, uh, also to have uh, less uh, all over town contacts. But the reality is that Tallinn is going to face a grand, grand traffic jams. If we, if we compare the figures per capita of cars, then in Helsinki there is twice as much cars uh, in families when it's in Tallinn. So actually comparing to the economic growth, the amount of cars is also making a rise. But, but I think we it's, need it's, to have, have a, uh, answer the question how to avoid that these cars, uh, what people have, uh, are not in the active traffic, particularly in the rush hours of town. What we do need is first, uh, we do need a Tallinn a circle a drive uh, for, uh, connecting uh, uh, Tallinn from east to west so that we could uh, uh, avoid the uh, passing through the city uh, town. And the secondly, there is no alternative, particularly if we're speaking about the Puhia uh, Tallinn, uh, for example, connectivity to a city centre to uh, tunnels, uh, car tunnels, there is no alternative. Urmas, let me ask you, you something very, yeah. very concrete. Um, in the event that you have to support something like the 15-minute city by the Reform Party, which would make it that I don't have to take my car and drive to the nearest shopping center to do my groceries of milk, right? Is that something that your party would support? Or are you in favor of building those ring roads so that I can take my car to the shopping center to buy my milk? I think... Uh, the of course, it sounds very reasonable and uh, clever that we have a uh, chance uh, to have all the services nearby. The problem is now, also with public services, what the town is offering, for example, family doctors, that uh, actually in Mustama, where I do a run, there are lists of family doctors are closed and the elderly people are saying, uh, okay, go to Lasnama now, have a family mm. doctor, which means actually the traffic goes all around the town. The similar happened, people are writing to me from Nume people that they have to go to the family doctor to Lasnam. Of course, town has to care about that, that public services should be near particularly the educational services, that uh, the, family, the children of the same family should have also in the same neighborhood uh, their uh, kindergarten places and so right. on. These public services need to be improved. In okay. that sense, I do fully agree. All right. Zuzu, for you, I mean, I, I, you know, asking you about bike lanes, I think it's obvious. You, you know, you probably have an obvious answer. So I'd like to he hear more from the Green Party. I think you've been a party for a long time. I know I've, I've been a voter for the Green Party. Then I stopped voting because nothing was happening. So I really want to see what's your policy, what's what's your vision, how do you convince these people that you have something credible in terms of green policies for Tallinn. Tallinn was just, you know, the, the green capital. That doesn't even make sense. But how, how do you see it? <laughs> it's actually very easy. If you want green, you have to vote green. Um, because all the other parties, they are very green when it's uh, election times. But when uh, the fall comes and uh, the leaves turn uh, red, yellow and so on. But we stay green all year round. So uh, if you want to uh, have green, you have to vote green, and that's that's as easy as that. And we see that uh, this uh, green wave across Europe, and it has to be sometimes that it, it comes to Estonia as well, you know. And um, uh, if uh, your uh, first question about where uh, where this money comes from uh, to implement all these ideas, that uh, I'm very uh, pleased that all the all the parties, almost all the parties, have quite green uh, programs, uh, then I have to agree with, uh, with Raimond and with Peter Bertel. Uh, it, it's very easy. We have to stop wasting money. We have to stop uh, 
uh, wasting money in in concrete we have to stop uh, start putting in it in people uh, Tallinn has been for a very long time um, uh, investing investing money the wrong way but it's actually not that exp not that expensive to uh, become really green as my first uh, answer uh, I, I was talking about this uh, how to make uh, easily a great impact and I think that this uh, 30 uh, kilometers per hour uh, uh, speed all over the city is one very uh, efficient way to uh, tell him become more green and it doesn't pay that many uh, in, in uh, money. And, uh, uh, but things like uh, the, the free transportation we have at the moment, the expansion of the bicycle network and this uh, remodeling of the main streets that's all something that the Green Party. Yes, is doing. of course, and uh, uh, this uh, this main street is uh, very important for me. Uh, uh, I'm a big fan of this project, and uh, when I was um, uh, when I was uh, uh, in uh, deputy mayor, when I was mm -hmm. a deputy mayor, I was uh, uh, lobbying for it in uh, in uh, in the uh, city hall, and. Uh, and it actually it has a really big support, but uh, on this political uh, uh, choices that uh, Central Party has made uh, and put a stop to it, uh, to this really good project, it's very, very bad. Uh, and if we talk about wasting money, like uh, this uh, project, uh, also Raymond talked about this Ready Day project, it paid, uh, it costed 40 million, millions. And uh, if we talk about the main street, it only costs 10 million. So we see uh, how many, how much money does uh, Central Party uh, put in people uh, and how much Central Party puts money in, in basically car drivers, uh, I don't know, whatever. And, uh, and this is all over the town. It's the same way that uh, uh, I live in Sule Street in um, in Pohja Tallinn. Uh, I live in this uh, five-story building. Uh, I see every day. I see elderly people. Uh, they are locked in their houses. They can't get out because uh, the houses don't have elevators. Mm. And it's the same thing in Mustama, in Lasnama. Uh, uh, people with disabilities. They can't get out. Uh, they they depend on somebody, on people, on the neighbors, or Maybe somebody has a good relative that has some time, sometimes, to come and help this uh, person outside, and it's really sad to look at it because, uh, you know, uh, when it uh, when it comes to when it comes like November, you see that uh, elderly people and women and children they're basically they they don't come out because it's it's uh, dark, it's slippery, and it's very dangerous for them. So they prefer staying at home. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's very sad because our city could be so much better. Our city could be for people, not for cars. And uh, I'm very uh, uh, for it that we have to stop putting our money in, in these big, big roads and these big, big projects. And this uh, Tallinn Hospital is, uh, is as well. I, d I don't think it's a good project. And it takes all the money we could really use somewhere else. All right, Joachim? Well, it's interesting. Uh, um, in fact, I'm the only businessman uh, sitting here uh, tonight. And, uh, um, and um, you're the only big businessman. I'm a small businessman. <laughs> OK, I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I have, over the years, brought in uh, huge amounts, maybe the largest amount of uh, investment uh, capital into Estonia. Um, so I, I, I believe I, I know something about you know, what makes sense from a, you know, in terms of how to handle money. And nobody has answered the question of where will the money come from. Um, Woodmus at least had a stab at it by saying that let's, let's increase growth somehow and then, you know, tax revenues will rise and we have money to spend. I'll try to give you an actual answer, which is that our party, um, as I was saying, is, is, is a very uh, business-friendly liberal party um, uh, in addition to being very green. Um, we You're would. You're pro nuclear party. Uh, uh, there, there's actually uh, nothing wrong, I believe, with uh, a green nuclear power when compared to coal or gas or oil or whatever else. 
Um, now, uh, um, uh, what would we do? Where would we find money? Well, to begin with, I believe that uh, the uh, administrative system in Tallinn, as well as uh, on the state, state level in Estonia, is incredibly inefficient. Anybody's, anybody who's had to deal with, with city government realizes that it's, it's extremely inefficient. We would probably look to, uh, oh, not, not overnight, but over, uh, over, the, over the next electoral period, to get rid of maybe a, a, up to a quarter of, uh, of the employees in the, in the city government, uh, replacing them with IT uh, solutions. Uh, this would not only, I believe, increase the efficiency of decision making, but it would actually free up a lot of money and it would put these people from uh, working at jobs which are extremely inefficient for the city and the, and the economy into actual real jobs in the private sector. So it would be win, win, win. Now, uh, this would then free up money which we could spend on something. And, and let's face it, there are a million things that money can be spent on. And, and, and as a newcomer, this is my first election, newcomer to politics, it never, never... Uh, fails to surprise me how creative politicians are when it comes to coming up with ideas on how to spend money. But, you know, how little ideas they have when it comes to, uh, you know, but thinking of how to make money. But coming to the transportation and the green yep. issue, uh, new tram lines, the existing yep. bike lanes. We would first and foremost be very careful about making promises. So let, let's focus on finding the money. And then, of course, let's look at tram lines and so forth. Uh, but I can give you a, a couple of really, you know, specific green proposals. Why on earth is it in Tallinn that if you want to build a, uh, an apartment building, you have to build a parking space for each apartment? Yes. Now, this, this, this first and foremost, it makes building the building much more expensive than would otherwise be the case. And it promotes the use of cars, especially in, in sort of built up urban areas where there is plenty of public transport to be used. So why not let developers build buildings which, with far fewer parking spaces, basically making it possible for people to buy their apartments cheaper, and then they can take the bus to work or the tram to work or whatever it may be. This saves money. This is a green policy. So Second fine. green yeah. policy. And I just can't believe that people aren't talking about it in this election. Estonia is in a stone age when it comes to uh, sorting uh, rubbish. How come, how come we're not sorting our rubbish? So, you know, let's get on with the real world and let's start to, let's start to take the ideas that have been, you know, tested and tried in, in more advanced uh, cities and adopt them here. If we want to become, in the long run, an example for others, we have to start by learning from uh, cities that are much more advanced in this area, much, much greener than we are. So uh, there are plenty of very practical things that can be done to both save money, uh, make this city greener, not just talk about, you know, let's be greener, let's be mm -hmm. greener, but okay. actually doing something practical about it. And, you know, if we had a city government with, with you know, strong representation from my party, we would be far, far more hard-nosed and we'd have a far better understanding of how business really works, how the economy really works, than unfortunately Thank the you. parties today have. Thank you. Georg, does your party have a green policy? Yes, we have it a, a little bit. But um, uh, during the last month, you saw your electricity bill. How did it was? I mean, it was the green bill. Yeah? And I think you don't want to see it anymore. So here is a small problem with the economy. Uh, but now uh, let's go further. At first, the 30 kilometers per hour will not happen. It cannot happen. Uh, secondly, the bicycle, the, the bicycle roads. Uh, have anyone here tried them? Yes, I just, I, I came here by bike, so. Ah, uh, okay. No, in the last summer I took, I took the challenge and uh, ride it by bicycle from my home, Christina, to the downtown, to the Kaubamaya, and it was not a very pleasant experience, as there are so many noisy cars all around you. That's quite exactly. nasty. Exactly. That is the problem. That you have too many cars in Yes, Thailand. that is the problem, but you cannot uh, disappear the cars as our economy needs the cars. Yeah? The people need to go to work. So, and so, so what's your proposal? Get rid of the bike lanes. Uh, not at the moment. I mean, uh, they can stay for a while and let's look if someone uses them. At the moment, I haven't seen anyone who uses them. How yeah. many people in the room use the bike lanes? 
All right. Oh, only some people. Yeah, some people. <laughs> <laughs> some people. I think, some. It right. was, I think it was majority right now. Oh, yeah. maybe it's, the it's, a, it's a subset of the population, so you yeah. know, obviously, maybe it's a subset of the population that uses more bikes than general. But okay, no, so uh, so bike lanes don't make sense in your in your view. What about the extension of some tram lines or any other green policies that your party might have? Uh, our party has brought in the new topic, the air tram, and I think it's a a, a, a third level uh, traffic, which. W which might be useful, yeah. But other kind of uh, tram lines, I mean, if they make, if they make, if they make sense, we can rearrange them. Uh, but at the moment, the uh, main street uh, project about what she was talking about, uh, I am not uh, directly against it. But at the moment, the problem is that uh, this project which we have on the table at the moment, it will blocks the car driving. Yeah? Uh, she wants to reduce the limit to the 30 km per hour, but we cannot do that, so we need to rearrange. Yes, we can. No, we can't. No, we can't. We can. So, so we need to rearrange this project. And our current major, the Mr. Kurwald, also said that the current project is not uh, very useful. So, a new brainstorming, and when we find a proper solution for the cars as well, then we can do it. I'd love to know more about the air tram, but I think we can do it in the break over a beer because I think that's a good topic. But uh, I want to go to the to the current party, and um, and maybe you can tell us what's what's your vision. You know what's working, what's not working, and also a little bit about this. Uh, you know the the main streets project and why was it cancelled, and you know is there something to be done about it? Give me a second, please. That was a lot of questions. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wasn't, you know, scrolling. I was trying to write down things because a lot of things were said. Uh, I also had a long day as Peter. I was on three debates and each in different language. So let's start with the money, if you're okay with that. Yes. Um, so the first, first thing and most important thing you must understand about the big projects that has happened in Tallinn during recent years, like Reidite, like Ulamist Eristmik, I don't know if there is somebody who has been living in Tallinn when Ulamist uh, crossing was made. Anybody? Raise your yes. hands. Okay, some. Uh, the majority of all those things were done mainly with European Union funds. So the bigger, biggest part of money was coming from the EU. It was accepted by the Ministry of Economy and the Ministry of Economy said Okay, you can build now. To help cars. Well, you could, you could ask, you could ask uh, the mayor candidate of the Reform Party, Mr. Michal, who was at that time the Minister of Economy, who was co-funding the project of the Ulamista, fully supporting the Radiate project and etc. And if you would ask, like, why, like, why are the European Union um, citizens, because the European Union money isn't some kind of virtual money, it comes from the German, the French, the Portuguese, maybe taxpayers, and, and etc. Why are they funding these kind of mean, evil things? Well, because they always have a meaning, and for example, Radite project is a part of the 10T um, network. network which aims to connect the ports, harbors with the main roads. And I was living, for example, for a long time on so the- So we get the funding, the funding comes from Europe. Yeah, no, uh, what I want to say is that you cannot make an argument that the majority of the money that we have spent was coming from our own budget and then we will just redirect it. The point being is that a big amount was coming from the EU is, and will be coming from, from the EU. And yes, EU will be one of the parts to fund things, as EU is, for example, funding the, the construction of bike lanes in Lasnama, but I will get to that point. The second thing, I think, if we talk about money and if we talk about investments and business, I think this city and this country and this part of the world has a very nice experience when we had a state economy. And we have learned during the last 30 years that the best thing we can actually do for economy is to create the conditions. And if you look at some of the factors 
that speak something about, about those conditions. For example, you can see the credit rating of a city or of a state. And the credit rating of Tallinn is AA minus. By Fitch, well, what's that minus? What's that AA? Well, it's the same credit rating as Estonia has. So Tallinn is economically as credible as Estonia as a state. Tallinn's, um, Tallinn's budget has been constantly growing and Tallinn's economy has been constantly growing. Okay, you can always say that it's not Mikhail Kulvert who was creating all those jobs, but you cannot say that all this was happening despite of the uh, government that was here for 15 years. Sorry. So speaking about funding, it's the question of growth of the city economy, and the main thing we have to do is Let, not to, to the, mix with business. Let's go to the concrete proposals yes. in terms of green initiatives. Uh, now, if let's begin with the bike lanes yes. and with the red ones. <laughs> or there are others. Or the others. Uh, okay, we can start with the others. Um, Raymond made uh, a good start about talking how he, as the like uh, the district governor of Pichia Tallinn, didn't manage to create any bicycle lane. Well, I don't know if the problem is with you or with Pichia Tallinn, because when I came to Lasname, uh, we got the funding to start creating bicycle lanes. And now, at this very moment, we are preparing to construct a three kilometer bicycle lane, which is totally in accordance to the bicycle strategy binding Tondiraba, Subdistrict, and Kadriorg. And there, Yeah, that is another lie by, uh, by Joachim's party, and I will get to that. And it's a lie. I will prove. But getting back to bike lanes, what we see is that if we want to create real bike lanes, not the red ones, we need time, we need money, and we need to not just to build some small thing, we need to reproject the streets. So, so why were they done? Uh, why, because why, why, if yeah, you just because said they're not takes, real bike lanes, so why did yeah, you do it? Because, for, first of all, if you want to make proper bike lanes as the strategy uh, needs or it costs directs... It costs money, yes. It costs money, and even more, it costs time to make a project. But then why now, do this now? Yes, so we have the Posca Street that is ready now. We have the Pronxy and Year Streets that will go to construction in November. We have the Siug Bridge connecting Mayaka and Gonsiere Street that is ready actually today and when the papers are done properly the bridge will open and it's a bicycle and pedestrian bridge to connect the Mayaka Street bike lane and the Gonsiere Street bike lane. Then there is the Vanakalama Street that hasn't started being built just because there was the problem with the bus stops that was just solved. What I want to say is that um, it's not that easy to create a proper, um, proper bike infrastructure and it's not just that you come and start digging no and digging said, money and No one said that yeah. it's easy, but so it just my feels point like is, you guys took the easy approach by uh, just painting now, over areas of the yeah. pavement If in I red. can, if I may... <laughs> Please. Yeah. So, point being is that when the four, four years ago we started this program, this strategy, by now, go and look at Posca. Go and look at the project of Yeah and Pronxy and you will see that the things are going on. The most um, hardest thing with this strategy is to rebuild the most central streets of Tallinn, like Tom Puyeste, Estonia, Puyeste, Gonsiuri, and etc. So there was a decision, not before the local elections, but back in December, that maybe we should try and build like a pop-up system that would be quite cheap, <laughs> quick, and will bring you know, uh, something that could be felt in all over the city. Yeah, I'm sorry that I'm eating your time. If I would be first, I would be short, but now I'm last, so I have to answer a bit and explain so, as well. Besides the bike lanes so and th the fact this that is they need work, yeah, is there anything else in your party's vision when it comes to green policies? Well, when it comes to bikes, it's not only building proper bike lanes, it's also promoting 
the other connected infrastructure. We are now making a pilot project in Lasname and Mustame by giving bike houses to bigger houses so people could store their bikes there. We are promoting the, well, we are building the bike parkings at schools, so to promote the uh, bike using from the schools. We are building special training grounds in the kindergartens so that children would know how to use the bicycles from the kindergarten on. But it's only the bike lane question. Now then, there is the biggest question, I think, is the public transportation question. And here we see that our biggest problem is that our line network is actually something we got from the late 80s, sometimes from the 70s. What we need is to totally rethink it, to reinvent it. How do we do that? We have um, started a year ago or some to create the so-called transport model. It, it is a very like a clever AI that helps you to, um, it's like a like sort of a algorithm that helps you predict how would different lines, um, how would, would they influence the traffic in the city, taking into accordance the numbers of people moving using the mobile positioning. So data, data driven decision process yes. when it comes and to public the, transportation. The, this this instrument, mm -hmm. instrument is now actually ready and uh, well, as far as I understand, from the next uh, winter or spring, it is ready to be used. Vladimir, I'm really sorry, we, we, we're running yeah. out of time. I, I will leave all of you one very quick. But maybe, I'm, I'm sorry, may I end and then people can, you know. Yeah. Uh, enjoy themselves, but uh, what I want to say is that uh, the, it's, it's also important uh, if we look at Tallinn's traffic problem that we do not forget that a lot of traffic, especially car traffic, is not coming from the Tallinn itself. It's coming from the cities, from the counties around Tallinn. Does Tallinn get any taxpayer money from people driving here from there? None. If we want to solve Tallinn's traffic problems in a higher perspective. And if we want to fund it in a proper way, we must look at the whole northern Haryuma. We must create a model where these kind of things will be co-funded and this whole region would be managed as a like a sub-region, not just as for a city. For a minute there, I thought you were going to propose toll roads for people coming from Vimsy, but uh, OK. Uh, <laughs> Very, very quickly. Yeah, very just, just very quickly, because uh, Vladimir accused my party of, of lying. Uh, yeah. the, the fact is that if you take the city uh, government budget for the last 10 years, then there has been a, a massive disproportionate amount of investment funds going into Lasnamar. Now, uh, uh, in fact, uh, for, yeah. it depends on how you count the numbers, but in, uh, our calculations is it's three times or... And in I the, will let uh, Vladimir uh, Yeah, yeah but, but wait. But uh, uh, so I just want to say that uh, the point here is that Las Nama is where the center party gets most of its most votes. Most of its votes, yes. And uh, what we stand for is a more equal division of money so that the city government, instead of spending everything centrally, and I don't want to give it to the uh, region. But I will let Vladimir very quickly, very quickly answer. Just that. the numbers from the investment budget of the year 2020. Uh, we take all the investments made by the city per one person living in a district. Lasname has got 154 euros per person, Habersti 299, Kesklin 325. And these are Vladimir, numbers. We're talking about 10 year average, not one, one year. Right. Now, and, now let's and these, talk. And these are numbers that you can yeah. probably I'm, check I'm on sorry, ST the, 200. The difference is I have this Excel that can be shown to anybody who wants. And ST200 has shown no actual numbers, despite the lie that Joachim and his party are spreading. Let's not get and into this at yes, the moment. And, I'm sure we can and, talk but it over you know, No, no, but the problem was not named. The problem with this kind of thesis that Joachim tries to tell us is that Lasname is overfunded. People from Lasname are overfunded. We should take money from them. That's not true. All right. And, and, and before you get to your, I will let you give a final remark so that you can give your points if you want to. But in your final remark, I would really urge you uh, to answer something as well because we're running out of time. The, the Central Party has been in power for, I, I actually think it's over 16 years now in the city. 
uh, hundreds of years, nobody knows. Uh, mo most of you probably weren't here uh, before the center party was in, in power. I, I don't remember it. So, so, you know, we've heard some arguments that might convince some of you. Uh, just raise your hands if you know who to vote for in these elections. Wow. So that's, that's really bad, right? So, you know, they're not more we've clarified. We've done a bad job. Exactly, right? They're not more clarified. Also, because we, have, we only had one hour, and as I predicted, we spent it all on, on the bike lanes. Um, but, uh, but so, in, in closing, I want to talk about the real political issue, which is whether Keskaracons is going to be in power again. Are you willing to form a coalition with Keskaracons? Or are you willing to form a coalition with the other parties? So how do you see yourselves? And how, you know, if we are to bring about change in this, in this city, realistically speaking, there needs to be a change of you know, coalition. So I want to know how willing are you to do a coalition with Cascaracon or the other parties? And I will let you very briefly summarize your points so that these guys can make a decision about who to vote for. And I'm going to do it this way. So Raymond. Thank you. Uh, well, the coalition bit is 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 pretty easy. I'll I'll answer that question. I think it's the 18th of October. Uh, the 17th is the election. We get the results, and then and after that we'll we'll talk about coalitions. Until that, I don't think anybody really realistically um, can say anything that's going to happen, except for Urmas, who's going to talk about a united opposition. But I'm not interested in a united opposition. I'm interested in a coalition government for talent. So so that's a big difference between us. But I wanted to say uh, uh, a funny. You, nobody probably know this, this, but Joachim, uh, can can you just say yes or no? You said you can get rid of like half of the bureaucrats in the city and replace them with AI. Did you say that? I said maybe up to twenty five percent. Oh, you said up to twenty five percent. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, as expected, we were we were talking about bike lanes the whole evening, uh, but I wanted to kind of stress that Talon also does a lot of other things. And, uh, and one of the things I think maybe the right wing parties don't don't get uh, that well because I heard like you want to get rid of half of people. The talent is involved in, in in many like very serious things as well. For instance, child service, child services. And the last thing I would want to see is kind of right wing, uh, you know, Thatcher inspired cuts in in social services. Because uh, you know I used to be in charge of a district, and we're also in child uh, in charge of of protecting children. And you cannot send an AI to a crying child at 3 a.m. in the morning. That's not going to do a world of good. You need to send an actual living human to that child. So that's one of the things also. When, if we speak about a coalition government that's going to come up, I really, really do hope that we're going to also invest uh, you know, in social services, in healthcare, in education, and childcare, and stuff like that, not just bike lanes. Thank you. Thank you. Bartel. The Reform Party will form a uh, coalition with Gescaragond if need be. However, we are more than eager to give Gescaragond a much-deserved break and form a coalition <laughs> with others. But one thing you need to know, if you already do not know this, is that the system here is that you have a 5% threshold. So if you vote for a political party that gets less, less than 5%, of the votes, those will go to the winner, which undoubtedly will be Gaskaragon. So make a smart choice when you go and vote. But in any case, even if you didn't raise your hand, go and vote, please, because if we have a higher voter turnout, no matter what your choice is, we will have a better, more democratic government here in, in Tallinn. Thank you. What am I this is actually the core question of uh, municipal elections in Tallinn, whether there is a change or not. And the, core, the change, real change, is only that uh, Keskeragond is led uh, to the opposition. And uh, my party's message is clear, and we are the only party who has clear, clearly stated that uh, we are committed to form a united coalition government, a Keskeragond free government of city. <laughs> and let me say that, uh, as Vladimir said, that, uh, well, it didn't uh, take place, the economic growth of Tallinn did uh, take place uh, in spite of city government. Yes, I answer that. It is happening in spite of activities or passivity of city government. You said the, the credentials of 16 years. Just one uh, real estate developer uh, called me two weeks ago from Pohya Tallinn and said that he has 
waited for 15 years of the planning procedure of this project. Another real estate developer said that because he was politically not accepted personality to the city government, he had to sell his uh, project because uh, the new developer had a chance and better connections to the city government to work it out. There is a real circle of power now, which has been for a generation in Tallinn uh, power, and this is a corrupt circle, and it needs to have change, and this is a core dilemma to all voters in Tallinn, whether there is a real change happening, and all the good promises about the communal and local issues could be in real competition carried out, or the same stagnation will, co uh, will continue. This is my message. Thank you. Thank you. Susan? Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to say, uh, when you go voting, uh, don't vote for any um, candidates that are uh, uh, represented in, um, in uh, our uh, parliament today, or any uh, ministers, especially ministers, because they won't come to the city hall uh, and they won't be interested in this uh, uh, local uh, life because they already have this um, uh, big... Uh, how to say, um, responsibilities uh, in Estonia. So they are called uh, 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 like broilerit. Um, uh, they are only ca uh, for catching uh, the votes and these people won't come to uh, uh, Tallinn City Hall uh, whatsoever. So uh, the other thing is, uh, if you want to see changes, like real changes in Tallinn, uh, I think uh, you should vote for uh, for women, uh, for uh, social democrats, for greens, uh, these kind of uh, leftist parties. So uh, I would uh, really urge you to uh, vote uh, in, uh, as your as your heart heart says. Not uh, don't be scared of uh, what Peter Bertel uh, said. And nobody's votes go to uh, other parties. Your vote is uh, is to. The, uh, who you give your vote to, it stays there. Don't be scared. So uh, if you want real changes, you have to pick differently this time. So, uh, and uh, just, just to quickly reflect on what Vladimir said about the bike lanes. <laughs> um, Very quickly. Yes, uh, we don't see any changes and we have this uh, really bad pop-up uh, bike lanes because uh, uh, Central Party didn't, didn't listen to us. Uh, when we had uh, p corona pandemic st uh, st uh, starting, we made a, a proposition uh, to uh, 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 take uh, uh, the lanes from cars and give them to bicyclists. And they didn't do it. And the red roads uh, we see right now, they are bad because uh, uh, they are very dangerous at intersections. and. Uh, Central Party doesn't want to uh, um, get in the way of uh, the car drivers, and that's why they don't uh, build the intersection to be more uh, safe for bicyclists. All right. Thank you very much, Zuzu. And uh, Joaquin? Well, um, oh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I'd like to start by um, uh, taking issue a little bit with what uh, Raimond said. Um, I mean, that was rather populist. Uh, 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 I, I, I would not have thought it of you, but uh, the, uh, what, uh, what uh, we stand for is efficiency. Now, um, if you make the city administration more efficient by adopting more IT, it doesn't mean that you take uh, you, you know, dedicated social workers away from the street. In fact, you can free up money to have more social workers on the streets or have more medical workers uh, available to, to help the citizens of, of Tallinn. I'm talking about efficiency. Um, the, uh, the, as far as uh, our party is concerned uh, in terms of uh, the future potential uh, coalition uh, governments, I would like to say that we are the, at the moment, uh, maybe the, the sort of the big promise. I mean, all the opinion polls show us uh, um, at various levels of support, but all you know, all very high up. Sort of, we, 
Uh, we, I think in, on a national level, Centre Party here in Tallinn, unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. But, but you, uh, you've been the big promise for a while already. So is it uh, going to materialize in this well, election? Well, I mean, we've been the big promise, coalition? and uh, I think the opinion polls are showing that we're you're, starting you're, to uh, I'm realize sorry, you're that. You're in fifth place in Tallinn. Uh, you're in fifth place at the moment. I don't know what opinion poll yeah, you've been uh, you've been you've been looking at. Uh, the 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 average of opinion polls uh, show us in fourth place, way ahead of you. But so co uh, co coalition the, wise. Coalition-wise, I, I think there I agree with Raymond. So uh, let's see what the elections bring. And the day after the elections, we'll have to look to see what is realistic. And, uh, and uh, I think what we care about is having an efficient, an efficient city government. I, I know that you, know, you want to say it, see it after the election, but coalition with Keskerakond. Well, I, I think it, it would be, uh, it would be uh, wrong uh, to sit here at this stage and start to talk about what, All right. you know, what we can Not and cannot wrong. do. It's honest to say to the people, before the elections, what are you going to do? <laughs> Estonia yeah. 200 uh, leaders said that uh, they could even form a coalition with ECRA in Thailand, so mm -hmm. everything is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, to, to be honest to her, she said that uh, it's not for her to decide, uh, it's for the people in Tallinn to decide. Uh, and uh, what we can say is that, that... She didn't rule it out. No, well, you c So after the elections, we'll see. After the elections, after like the elections. very old political fox now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Joaquin. Yeah, Ekre. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, concerning the coalition, it's always a very difficult question. Uh, and as I am not the leader of my party, then I cannot answer that. But I believe that in the local level, uh, it could be possible with uh, everyone. And I will continue with what uh, Mr. Reinsalo started, that we really uh, should break the highly corruptive power of the centristic party. Uh, you as a foreigner, you as a foreigner might not be familiar with this issue, but this party is uh, also at the moment under a criminal investigation again. Yeah. Earlier, earlier, they have been convicted in the court for more times for dealing uh, kind of a dark money. So this kind of corruption, this party... So but regarding the coalition, I understand you, know, you, you have a party structure and you answer to the... But, but you have an opinion as well. No, so, yeah, the opinion was that we should break the centristic party corruptive power and, and to form some other kind of coalition. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Vladimir. Hey, friends. <laughs> <laughs> so coalition. <laughs> In case, in case, uh, in case are, you don't get, we are, we are, we, we, we've been quite okay without that for some while. We had a test made with the Greens and with the Social Democrats. We've enjoyed. They didn't for some reason, but um, I mean, uh, becoming uh, becoming serious. Um, I totally understand when we speak that it's a problem that we have a party that has been almost um, unanimously leading a city for 16 years, and it's not very democratic. But at the same moment, think about the people that were voting for this party from year to year. None have, okay, there has, have been any accusations with the central party, and of course there has been corruption cases as with any party that has been in power in Estonia since 1999, 91, well, sorry. But um, in fact, we must understand that it was the people's choice that the central party was leading the, the city. And of course, our claim this time is to keep this mandate, to keep bringing to life our governing program. And if you would ask me, what would the central party do on the morning of 18th when, if it doesn't win an absolute majority and whom will it form, would like to form a coalition with? The main question would be with whom can we bring to life our program? And that's the whole point with us. We know that the longer we are in power, the stronger is the will to 
send us to the you know resting bench, give us some time to reflect on ourselves, and we understand that we need to perform higher and higher. So for us, the main question of staying in power is if we can bring our program to life, we will try to stay in power. If we cannot, then we go to a position. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's, it's been a very long uh, uh, one hour. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I thank you, Ish. So I thank you all for that. Uh, again, my, my deepest thanks to all of you for being here uh, and answering these questions. I think it's, it's a, a welcoming factor. I think it is part of the fact or part of the reason why I still think Tallinn is so welcoming to foreigners that we get you know, in a, such a small country access uh, to people like you and ask you questions directly. Uh, we will take a short break. Uh, Philly Joes has asked me to remind you that you can order drinks from the bar. Uh, thank you, Philly Joes, for welcoming us here as well. And some, buy book, buy book. and by the book, there's a book. Uh, by the book as well. And um, and we'll be back in about ten minutes with questions from the audience. If you haven't asked your question in Slido, do it now. You can upvote the question so that the most asked questions will be asked. I hope we can keep that to. 20 minutes so we can all go home and get some rest as well. So thank you very much to all the candidates. Thank <laughs> you. 
events just follow our Facebook pages and also obviously uh, our web pages um, by the way quick remark as well we have two MPs here because so they have before brought up the, the question of who is the member of parliament and I forgot to mention the, in, the, in the introduction Raymond Kaljulaid is an MP and Urmas Reinsalo is an MP but I'm not saying that don't vote because they're MPs just to clarify who is an, a member of parliament here uh, but they're also mayoral candidates, so they're number ones in the prospective list. So Raymond in Social Democrats and Urbas Reinsalo at Isama. And quick fact check as well, Joachim before mentioned that, uh, mentioned big investment. Indeed, yes, I forgot to mention in the introduction that the company he has led indeed was the biggest uh, financial investor in the Baltic states in the 1990s and 2000s. So just not just in Estonia, but also in the Baltic states. So I think that deserves a, a credit, obviously. 
Uh, right, so we carry on now with the slider questions. There are so many, and because the first part went a little bit slightly behind the uh, schedule, so we, we will not be able to answer all of those. We will focus those questions that have been asked get related to Tallinn, because Tallinn city government cannot legalize, for example, gay marriage. It's not a question for the local government. They cannot do that. So we will ignore those questions. These are for the national parliament. So when we have the national parliament election in 2023, we will deal with those questions. And uh, with the slider questions, uh, Relika from our team is helping here with Joao. They will uh, choose the question. Relika and Joao, I'll give it to you now. Thank you, Silver. Um, just a quick remark as well. I'm, I'm an Estonian who has lived, in, uh, uh, lived, work, studied in many countries, but I do come back to Tallinn and I uh, live in Estonia because I think Tallinn is a great city, uh, even if you don't have an Estonian girlfriend. So um, uh, <laughs> I hope this is not the only reason why most of you are here. And uh, I'll, um, as Silver mentioned, so some of the questions uh, should be directed to, to the government and, and it's not in the power uh, of the city government or the person sitting here, but let's... Um, and meanwhile, please feel free to also upvote the questions so I'll, um, I'll have a better um, overview of what is important. So let's start with the first question. I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase some of them as well, if you don't mind. Uh, so the uh, uh, question is, what is your LGBTIQ plus equality strategy? So I'll ask it like that. Uh, one sentence only, please. Uh, what, does, what do you and your party plan to do to make uh, Tallinn more LGBTIQ friendly? Let's start with Ekre. <laughs> Our city is friendly against everyone, and the city government nor the parliament need to support such things for the government's money, and that's it. <laughs> okay, one sentence. Uh, let's continue from that side, Vladimir. Um, no tolerance to any kind of... Um, uh, how do you... Uh, discrimination and racism uh, whatever the basis is it sex race language origin or uh, anything else and uh, as i said in the beginning i think Tallinn is open One and sentence. should remain open to a sentence. how do you plan to do that uh, uh, not make a policy of what has been said by georg i didn't say any policy Okay. I only said that we don't need to support the sexual propaganda with the government's money. Are you, let's continue, Joachim. Well, we, uh, we clearly, uh, very, very clearly stand for the right of every, every person to lead the life they want to lead. Uh, um, uh, we oppose uh, any, uh, like Vladimir said, any discrimination on the basis of uh, whatever it may be. Uh, we believe that uh, if we were had a, had the right to decide over these things in the city, uh, the city should aggressively pursue any anybody who is actually uh, caught uh, um, carrying out any acts of uh, of uh, discrimination against uh, people for whatever, uh, whether it be for race or uh, sexual orientation or whatever it may be. That's a long sentence. Thank you, <laughs> Susan. Estonian uh, Greens are the first party to um, say it out uh, loud that we are um, uh, pro uh, marriage equality, same-sex marriages. Uh, we have uh, candidates uh, uh, that are LGBT people uh, in Tallinn, uh, and uh, we have a program that uh, and we say that uh, if we uh, come to power, uh, we uh, join the uh, Rainbow Cities Coalition. So I think it's uh, very good. Self-explanatory. Thank you. Isamar defends uh, human dignity of everybody. There is no question of that. But uh, we do not have any particular uh, agenda or program on uh, uh, enhancement of sexual reforms uh, in munici our municipal manifesto. Thank you. Bertel <laughs> Peter. Yeah, I, the community, the LGBTQ community sent around an, an email as well, so a questionnaire to all 
candidates, I think. So I, I ticked yes in every box, so people are equal and we have no issue with that. We're a liberal party, so if it comes to hoisting rainbow flags at certain dates to the to the building opposite the street, I'll gladly do that as vice mayor, no question about that. So, yes. But there's a big difference between sort of, you know, what most of you said, except for Zuzu, having a passive attitude towards no discrimination, you know, not having a discrimination, versus having proactive measures to make it more welcoming, right? And I think it's clear now that most of you are a passive attitude, and Zuzu has an active. I think you do me uh, a disfavor in the sense that I, I did say that we would stand for actually actively pursuing any acts of discrimination. Yes, as would the, the reform it's reform the party, uh, but it's in the local elections we have not put that strong of an emphasis on this. Our political stance on this is pro. There's no that question about uh, it. Actually, it's not true because uh, when I Estonian was mistaken, clearly. Yes. when uh, when Estonian Greens uh, made this petition uh, where we have uh, almost uh, thirty six uh, thousand uh, signatures. Uh, to uh, legalize uh, same-sex marriages in Estonia, then uh, your uh, party leader didn't take a stand and she didn't come uh, out and say, yes, we support LG LGBT national, people. Yeah, issue, but, but he said that uh, their party is uh, LGBT friendly, but it's actually not true. They're playing on this uh, uh, conservative side uh, with the conservative uh, voters. So let's be honest here. Raymond. You were too aggressive with this issue. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I don't think you need to be. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit surprised as well that es Estonian liberals are, have become very, very timid and afraid of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, ECRA stealing their votes. Uh, we're not afraid, we're pro. Can we just get along with your answer, please? Thank you. Uh, you are afraid because uh, Suzu is right. You do, you do not support uh, same-sex marriage uh, in Parliament, uh, and the Social Democrats do. And we've actually made a pledge that you know, the, the petition that the Greens started is gonna end up in a committee controlled by the Center Party and Reform Party is gonna die there. It's not gonna become a bill because they don't support it. So, it so no, theory. sorry, but so as the Social Democrats in Parliament, we will uh, pass this bill on to actually to legislate on it. Wait, 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 so, wait, wait, wait. and as the mayor candidate, I think also Tallinn has to be pretty proactive in this uh, issue, has to work with the LGBT community and their organizations. They have specific problems need to be solved. Uh, we have a whole nighttime strategy that also involves uh, uh, specific points on uh, making sure that people in the LGBT community are safe uh, in, in Italian nightlife. You need, need kind of special attention brought to that and, and many other things. So, so you know, I, I would encourage my friends in the, in the so-called liberal parties, I would say, uh, to also be more proactive on this issue. Thank you. Just to give you an overview of how uh, important this question is, at least to uh, the uh, audience in this room, uh, this question was upvoted, upvoted basically as many times as there are people here. So obviously, I hope you all take it uh, as seriously. Um, let's go on. Um, <laughs> This has been covered quite quite a lot today. So um, uh, the next one would be: How do you plan to tackle the rising cost uh, cost of housing prices in Tallinn? There were I was just two weeks in Berlin. There were protests against uh, the same issues, obviously in every European capital. How do we tackle it in Tallinn? Start from this side and well, you need to do. Yeah, you need to do two things very shortly. You need to build municipal housing, and a lot of it. Uh, the city has built like 80 apartments in the past two years. That's clearly not enough. And secondly, I think you need to work with the private sector and make the planning process more effective so the private sector can uh, also build um, cheaper uh, rental housing. And, and I think these two things are the most important things to do. Okay. Municipal housing is the answer indeed. If we look uh, to the Nordic countries, it's a functioning model. And we had that as well before, before the war, war came. And even the private sector, so the big difference between the Nordic cities and Tallinn is that in the Nordics, the, the, the municipality owns a ton of land. So they, they get to dictate more what to do and what not to do. Here it's a bit different. Tallinn has less land. However, the municipality still gets to say, when they accept or don't a certain detailed planning or, or hand out permits to uh, private uh, real estate developers. So we're looking to Copenhagen for inspiration, for example, there, 
when you're a private real estate developer and you develop real estate, then the city has a condition that you need to fulfill, that is 25% of the apartments that you build privately, 25% of them need to be for municipal housing, lower rent. So there are clearly things that we can do and the Reform Party has in its program. So municipal housing and working closely together with the private sector to make that happen. Okay, thank you. Please keep it shorter and sweeter. I didn't say anything, no. no, no everyone, I mean. Um... Uh, Isamo has a, a right of center policy. Uh, first, uh, about social housing. Now there is a long queue of people having uh, a need of social uh, um, uh, flats, and we say that with the uh, cooperation of private sector we could solve that problem, that uh, we will pay the, the private uh, flat owners uh, money from the city budget so that people could have the uh, houses uh, or flats. Secondly, municipal uh, flats, uh, this is what uh, uh, town now has, uh, we uh, would like to give a chance to people to sell the flats if they want, the market price, and this is a very, our clear message. Thirdly, what is about uh, speaking uh, about the uh, cost of homeowners' uh, prices? It is very important that the city needs to invest more to the renovation as houses, uh, private uh, uh, houses, but also to the block houses renovation. This is something with, uh, to control the uh, indeed heating and electricity prices. Fourthly, uh, Isama is fully against the rise of the taxation of uh, homeowners. There is again a new uh, bill in the parliament also about the rise of uh, land tax. Isama is against uh, any additional regulatory burden of homeowners. And what is important uh, about the uh, mm, uh, cost of uh, living indeed as Raymond mentioned this is actually a uh, the green light in uh, the planning procedure in the town should be given to the developments of uh, living uh, areas this is actually one of the strategic goals to lower the price of the uh, homes thank you uh, yes it's a very good question um, uh, of course uh, uh, city has to build uh, uh, their own uh, uh, solar panels, parks, more uh, on top of the houses uh, to keep the cost down. Of course, the uh, city uh, rental flats to keep the rent more cheaper. And uh, if uh, we can make uh, sure that people in Tallinn don't need cars to drive, so, so you can also save money, right? And of course, the, the thing that Joachim uh, mentioned before that is in uh, Green's uh, program as well is that when uh, their new buildings are built, we shouldn't uh, force uh, the builders to uh, build uh, every uh, park, uh, parking space for every flat because it, it uh, rises the costs. So, and of course, renovating the houses, uh, uh, insulating and so on. Thank you. Okay, a couple of things. First and foremost, if you start mixing up city money and private developers, then you get corruption. And we've had that in the city uh, under the center party government. Uh, so we are definitely opposed to that. What we would like to see more of is innovative thinking. For example, uh, there's a whole new industry now uh, emerging of... Uh, of environmentally sustainable, basically wood-based uh, modular housing that can be set up uh, much cheaper than uh, traditional uh, apartment buildings. Uh, we would stand for basically promoting that sort of uh, development uh, in terms of how the city regulates uh, our new building permits and so forth. And we would also stand for basically the city may be buying out people who are moving from uh, these uh, old Soviet-era apartment blocks into these newer buildings and these, these apartments that the city buys out, they could be handed over for uh, social needs, people who are basically in a, in a queue for, uh, uh, an assisted, uh, for assisted housing. So uh, again, we have a private sector approach, we have an environmental approach, uh, and we have an anti-corruption approach uh, to uh, this particular problem. Yeah, Thank well, you. buying out flats isn't corruption at all. Doesn't smell like one. But um, yeah, first of all, uh, first of all, I'd like to finish this uh, thing that oh, the holy developers, the poor guys, the city government doesn't let the chance to develop their uh, tiny small buildings. Come on, 
Actually, we will keep the developers in check. We will keep working with their developments as long as it's necessary to get you know, a normal development, a normal quarter with all the necessary services that you need. That's first thing. And we should be even harsher with that. We should be dictating more actively what type of housing we want to see in different parts of the city. I have an example. In Lasname, we should tell them, stop, you do not build Lasname more. Go to Umira Street, you can understand what I'm talking about. The second thing, yeah, well, I agree that we should have city rental housing, but again, not social housing, that's another thing. It's city rental housing, it's a thing that is used in a lot of cities in order to control the property prices. And the third thing, we can build the social housing as fast as it is theoretically possible, but we will never cope with the necessities that we have in the society. So when the local government cannot solve the problem of people with its own apartments, we should start renting apartments or helping people for paying the rent, for example, for the first month, because usually that's the issue. A person doesn't have enough money not to rent, but to pay for the first month, when you have to pay for the, how do you call it, makler? Uh, Broker. The, to the broker, to the, you know, to the guarantee fee, maybe that's the thing that the city has to support so that the people can more easily rent the flats on the private market and a bill connected to this kind of measure is now being prepared by the social department. These three things. Town already has this one month uh, rent support program, but this is totally foolish. What happens in the second month? To the person. Yeah, I will explain, Urmas, as you haven't rented an apartment for a long time ago, uh, for, a, for a lot of people it's not the problem to pay three, four hundred euros per month. It's the problem to pay uh, 1,300 euros for the first month. So for some, for some, you need the starting package. For some, you need the support every month. For some, you need to hand over the apartment with the keys. It should be very individual, it should be personalized, and this is the th thing I see that if we cannot solve it on our own, we should use and cooperate with the private sector. Let's keep it short. Thank you, yes. Uh, last yeah. word for Georg. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the problem is breaking into Estonia like it is already in the Western Europe. But here I also agree with uh, Mr. Helenius who said that we cannot mix the, pri the private real estate a development with the city government's money because it will only make additional problems and corruption. But like the Mr. Reinser also said that no additional household taxes anymore, that, that's enough already really. But the main, problem at the, the, the main problem at the moment is the rising electricity and heating bill. Yeah? So what can we do here? And our party is the only one who has said very clearly what to do. At first, uh, to reduce the electricity excise tax, yeah. then uh, to stop to subsidize the green energy as it will lead us all to the bankruptcy. Uh, if it's necessary to cancel the Kyoto Protocol and to abolish the CO2 quotes, and uh, fourthly, in, in Estonia we can stop at least partly the payment of the Estonian e energy dividends, because they don't need to pay the dividends every year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, finally, it seems to me that the only solution is the nuclear power plant. Thank you. Okay, let's ask something different for a change. Uh, Linna Heil, if any of you doesn't know, that's the big um, flat building um, right next to the port that was built for the 1980 Olympics. Uh, so Linna Heil, any chance to see something happening before it collapses, plans, ideas? Let's um, mix it up, uh, Vladimir wants to. Yes, because uh, we have now facts and we had a contract with Talink, uh, an agreement that uh, the city and Talink together will co-fund the reconstruction of Linnahal, create there a public place, create a new um, harbor that is going you know, to the sea, I don't know how to name it, Kai. Um, the plan... Peer, yes, th s thank you. You're welcome. Yes, uh, never use the word peer, not, I'm not as rich, but um, 
But then Corona came and the business of Talink uh, sank um, in a virtual way, of course. Um, so now the city has started to um, find another partner who would be ready uh, to participate in this project. And as far as I know, we have three or four um, possibilities on our table from international big funds that are ready to co-fund the reconst reconstruction of the Linnahal and it's totally planned. B before we go to the next one, are any of those projects cultural? Um, all the projects aim to create a concert and conference um, hall in Linnahal to keep the um, environment open and to enrich the whole um, sub-district around Linnahal and keep it open to the public. Right. What am I saying? I think it's a very good uh, symbol of the total uh, incompetence of the city government. They have promised it to fix it uh, uh, in 2013, then in 2017. Now they are saying they are doing it in 2021. Of course, there should be international conference center, and we are losing uh, by calculations um, for a st a Tallinn GDP 15 million euros of international tourist uh, visitors uh, coming uh, to conferences uh, to Tallinn, and this is actually real money. What we are losing in the highest value property area of uh, Tallinn you can find, and uh, what is most uh, significant is that still it's 10 years is closed this institution, uh, this uh, hall now. But the city has its own separate department to manage it. Uh, institution, but uh, locks are closed. Very funny, it's something like Soviet type uh, management. And there is a uh, even special council of that, uh, isn't it? Well, uh, Vladimir? Uh, there Your is like a person and that. one who are really managing that and the technician. But of course, it's Mr. Kulvert who has developed the coronavirus for the central party to win the, win the election. Okay. Does anyone else care to comment if you have a plan? Yes. Sorry, uh, Susu was first. Uh, we totally agree that it uh, should be renovated. We uh, uh, went there a few years ago and um, uh, made a song there uh, when, when it was elections 2017. And yes, I totally agree with Urmas that the uh, central party has promised and promised and promised. and. Uh, uh, today I wouldn't go to the same studio because I think it's dangerous there. But it's uh, the, the ceilings are coming in, uh, down, and uh, but it's a really it's a great place actually. It's uh, the the architecture there. I think uh, it should be renovated. So what's the proposal? Conference. <laughs> Uh, uh, we should renovate it and make it as a conference place, as I think uh, everybody agrees here. It's, it's being That's made immortal already by the Tenet with movie. Money? Sorry, Raymond. Yeah. Uh, Let's make it a bit more concrete. Uh, first of all, I have to say, of course, it's absolutely right that it, this project has been mismanaged incredibly badly. And, and, and the fact that you know it, it, it was promised in 2016, the city government and the national government agreed that this would be renovated still hasn't happened. It's, it's, it's beyond funny. But yeah, I think... It, I was, think it was your promise, by the way, as no, no, uh, as the, it was, it was, as the it, governor it was, of Puchia Tallinn no, at that time. No, no, <laughs> actually it was in the in the government coalition agreement uh, between the city government run by the center party and Rathas' first government run by the center party and nothing happened. And uh, I, I would comment on a fact. So, sorry, but the thing is, uh, what I, what I want to say is, uh, I think it's a pipe dream that this could be done with the private sector uh, because um, nobody has, is going to invest in creating a concert space uh, uh, this big in Tallinn without wanting something substantial in return. And the only thing that a city can give is the surrounding territory so they can build houses instead of creating an open space by the sea. So there has to be a deal, again, between the government and the city government to co-finance it and renovate it. That's, I think that's the only solution, only way to do it. Joachim. Uh, am I the only one here who, uh, who thinks that that's just about the most ugly building uh, the world has ever seen? And, and, you know, and why charm. the hell do we want to renovate it? Let's just tear it down and, and put something nice instead there. I mean, it's... <laughs> Ooh. Um, Ooh. It has its charm and historical value, and the people of Tallinn... Um, it built in 1980. Yes, sorry. My father's an architect, and I've, I've had a few discussions with him, and I'm sorry, father, I completely disagree with you. And I completely disagree with the party line. Our party will fund it. And I agree with you, Joachim. I think it's a 
fucking monstrosity. <laughs> However, given popular demand, the Reform Party has uh, put it in the national government's coalition to give it funding to be renovated. I think the two gentlemen have had two little romantic moments on top of Linahal, watching the sunset and drinking wine. With, with, with the awesome view. Sorry, I'm, Vladimir. I'm sorry. One, one small fact. Um, Tallinn would have been glad to invest uh, money before, but it was just a few months ago when the European Commission finally said, yes, you can do that. And we have been waiting for the decision by the Commission for years. So, I mean, that's a really huge project, and um, it's not just a bike lane to make. Yeah, you can't just paint over it. Yeah. <laughs> Georg. I have nothing to add. You have said everything, I mean. And right. uh, the result is uh, still not there. And unfortunately, I also can't give you the results because it's a, a difficult topic. And really, the solutions might be to tear it down or to renovate it with the private money or with the government's money. Just let's uh, brainstorm on, I think. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll try to put together and paraphrase but some it's of it's very good, simple, again, of incompetence of Tallinn city government. You know, they waited for EU commission acceptance uh, for three years. Three years waited. How you could be uh, defending your own town uh, interest to go and uh, knock to the doors, but just lazily uh, waiting for three years? Urmas, was yes, five years. Urmas, That's you were the foreign minister at that time. You have done nothing to lobby that thing. Shame <laughs> on you. Keep it, now um... I'm entering to the city policies. Be, be aware. <laughs> oh, we are already <laughs> afraid. Don't go personal, please, gentlemen. Um, so uh, let's go to the topic. It's been asked like in different uh, different ways, but um, there was an article today in Arirat and the Esti Express about um, big surprise Estonian unicorns, which will be the next hectocorn, hectosarvik, and so on. So we all know this is um, basically our our image in 2021 as a great unicorn country. Not to mention the supermodels. Uh, big question: uh, How do we plan to attract the attract and keep the foreign talent here? Um, how do we? Yeah, uh, basically the the main question from the audience: How do you plan to integrate, include uh, foreigners, foreign talent, uh, everyone, so that uh, Tallinn would be a great city for everyone? Bertel Peter. For, for details, look at the first part of the debate, the public space. Include, sorry, including the Russian-speaking population. So the urban environment has a great deal to play, but we don't need to repeat ourselves. If we look to Finland, for example, Finland has a very well-coordinated talent attraction management strategy. It's called the uh, uh, Talent Boost Program. And there, for example, the national government coordinates with the cities, and the cities are doing the nitty-gritty work. And for example, Espo City, so next to Helsinki, a part of Helsinki, de facto. Uh, for example, has Finnish, Swedish as the sort of municipal language, and now English as well. So they started piloting with EU money to, to open up departments and services in English because of the high concentration of tech and other talents there. So, long story short, I think the city should definitely look into providing more services, basic information and more services in English, and that can be a jumping point to providing more flexible daycare and schooling positions. So if you arrive in mid-November, then where to put your kids is the middle of the academic year. Everybody's saying, no, 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 we have these rules and they're all in Estonian. Instead, it should be a service instead of bureaucracy. English language services information to begin with. Thank you. Vladimir? A few years ago, uh, well, when I was still working in the central district government, we have started a pilot program aimed at the local expats in order just to fulfill the things uh, my colleague from the Reform Party was just naming. Tr translating the services into English, making them understandable, uh, creating a um, contact person for people not of Estonian or Russian language in uh, the uh, system of the city government, uh, translating the news 
not only the big, big news, but also the local news of what pipe is being now reconstructed on your home street, and, and et cetera, and et cetera. And I think that the main focus that we should have here is that an expat is firstly a talent citizen, and he has the same necessities, the same problems as any talent citizen has. And we have to address them in a way that is understandable for that person. A, an English-speaking or a third-language child in a Italian kindergarten in any district is now something very usual. So we should just promote it, and we should continue with this kind of program. Yeah, I just I just wanted to add. Uh, I agree with uh, with the practical things that Parto uh, was saying. That's very true. But there's also a, another aspect I think is very important. Before I um, got into politics, I was in, in, in private business, and and we worked in a cluster of of uh, big uh, technology companies in in Bohia, Thailand, that used to hire people from Sri Lanka, Latin America, all kinds of uh, other European countries, uh, that you know had a slightly darker complexion than the average Estonian. And uh, when uh, ECRA started becoming popular, uh, one of the things that the owners of that company um, used to kind of talk to me a lot about is the general atmosphere of racism on the streets in Estonia. So that's something that we have to, I think, as a city and as, as a nation, we have to most definitely combat as well, because nobody's going to come and work here if they feel threatened in public spaces or if they get um, abuse on the tram line or, or, and that's not called out by the city. So, so I think that also plays a, a, a very important role, that people need to feel completely safe, despite the fact you know, they might be of a different race, of a different background. Thank you. Susu? I have uh, three, uh, three points. Um, of course, the first is, uh, I will continue where Raymond uh, left, uh, that, of course, uh, the city has to be welcoming uh, for every kind of families, all colors of people, and uh, all kinds of sexual orientations. And the city has to say it out that you are welcome. Uh, the second thing is, uh, of course, the environment uh, where we live. Uh, we uh, have to be not only f uh, friendly in words, but of course, uh, safe streets as well. And uh, uh, but concer concerning the open uh, governance, uh, we the Italian city has to be much more uh, inclusive of its city citizens in uh, in uh, planning uh, new things and so on. Uh, and uh, I think good example is uh, Helsinki, where the governing is really open and. Uh, and uh, people, uh, people are uh, interacted in, uh, in decision making uh, very, very well. So, and uh, the third thing is that um, these uh, uh, kindergartens and schools uh, should uh, be much more better quality than they are today. The uh, food there, uh, which uh, children uh, have to eat, should be organic. Uh, and uh, we could uh, make uh, step by step organic food, not not only not not all at once, but we could make step by step. And of course, uh, uh, vegan choice in every school, in every kindergarten, and in every um, uh, public uh, place. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, sorry, same. Yeah, go yeah, on. Joachim. Just uh, quickly, I, I, I'm maybe a, an interesting case in point because uh, I'm married to an Estonian, um, uh, so we have a bilingual family. Uh, my, uh, my, from my first marriage, I have uh, older children who went to school in uh, England in uh, very expensive private schools that were uh, claimed to be extremely good. When I compare those schools to the schools that my, my younger kids now go to here, Estonian municipal schools, I think the quality of teaching here is as good, especially in the maths and the sciences, as it was in these very, very expensive uh, private schools in, in, in England. Uh, uh, Estonia has, uh, I think, the, well, the PISA studies, of course, show it, but it's got excellent schools. What I believe we should do, however, is, is for young kids especially, and most of you here in the room are reasonably young, so you might still have your, uh, you know, uh, children you may have, you know, ahead of you. Um, don't be afraid to, uh, to teach them Estonian. Put them in an Estonian language kindergarten because the schools are excellent. And they learn, I mean, the kids uh, learn very good English as well in, 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 in Estonian schools. So, uh, you, you know, you can get uh, free of charge uh, an education that is comparable to the very best that private schools in England can offer uh, here in Tallinn. So I think that's a great reason to, uh, 
to stay here. And it's probably a great reason for uh, others to come here. A really positive comment, thank you. Uh, for Georg, there has been a little bit different, very direct questions from the audience, so I hope you don't mind if I rephrase. Uh, you already mentioned before in the debate that Dekra would, softly said, only like to see uh, immigration from European Union countries. Uh, how do you think that's uh, helping the, uh, to find or attract foreign talent? And, and more exactly, it has been asked, do you think Bolt and Walt and uh, all the great um, uh, startups that we have, uh, unicorns, are warehouses of lo for low-quality immigrants? How do you comment that? Where, where do we find talent? Uh, no, uh, unfortunately, they partly are. Yeah? But the word we find talents, I mean, uh, we are not against the talents from everywhere. I mean, if a talent wants to come from Africa and to establish here a billion euro company, then we are not against that. I mean, yeah. But what if we black? What? What if he's black? So then let him be. So what is your policy? What? Uh, what is your policy? How? We, we obviously need foreign talent for Estonian economy. No, yeah, I have already said that against the talents and the skilled labor, we have nothing. Yeah. Everyone can come if he is adapted to our job market. And that's it, very easy politics. How do you plan to support that? Actually, it is supported at the moment. I, I, thi I think the CEOs of most of our uh, companies would disagree. It's very, very hard to find and attract talent to Estonia. I don't know if you have any, any further comments. But on it's this hard topic. to find them to, to any country. I mean, to Latvia and to Lithuania, there is the same problem. Um, I just want to add up uh, one thing that uh, I think the, it's the most important thing all over the world right now. It's a climate issue. And I think that talent should really be ahead of it. Uh, and because uh, we can't uh, make a good, uh, good uh, climate uh, policies in Estonia without talent. So we need talent on board and taking it very, very seriously. And I think it's very important to young people and talented people as well. Absolutely. Just uh, very quick, like uh, as, uh, business, business input here. Uh, uh, yes, we have to find talented people. Uh, and for us here in Estonia, it's obviously a lot easier to uh, find these people in uh, Slavic countries, Belarus, Ukraine. I mean, lots of young people uh, in Belarus, for example, would love to, to move and to, to, to get jobs, uh, for example, here. Uh, the problem uh, we face is, uh, is simply language. And what's very important is that uh, if we bring in people, for example, from these countries, then they, the kids have to go to Estonian language schools. Uh, you know, we cannot uh, integrate them otherwise if we don't, if we don't bring them up as, uh, as Estonian speakers. Um, uh, so uh, uh, the linguistic issue is highly, is a big, big part of immigration policy. But uh, logically for us, the easiest place to find these skilled people for our, our, uh, our companies would be Belarus, Ukraine especially, you know, Russia itself. Um, so, uh, you know, they can come from, from anywhere. As far as we're concerned, we, we welcome skilled people from anywhere, entrepreneurial people from anywhere, and people willing to work hard from anywhere. But, w you know, people don't want to come to Estonia. It's not a logical, natural place that people want to, uh, you know, move to. We have to, we have to be realistic. Our, our, our growing companies, uh, the, the startups of today, maybe the unicorns of tomorrow, need skilled workers, most logical place to, to find them would be Belarus, would be Ukraine and Russia itself, Thank but there is this language issue. Absolutely. Um, we are, did you want to say something, Urmas? We are running out of time. We're already over time. So let's uh, finish up with the remarks. No, half an hour. We, pl we planned until nine. Uh, anyone else want to say something on the subject? I may uh, finalize, yeah. Um, <laughs> of course, uh, Tallinn uh, does not have... Uh, uh, aggressive and clear uh, investment policy, if you asked about unicorns, the, and this is a problem. And as I said, Tallinn does not have uh, clear and proper uh, expat uh, policy. I'm proud to say that indeed several expats are also running uh, in my party list to the city council. Um, I, and I think it is cool that uh, these people are also active in the local municipal issues. 
And, uh, well, the migration policy is a very sensitive issue in Estonia. And uh, we have our past in that sense. And to be clear that, uh, uh, as Joachim uh, described also the current situation, when the low level uh, working uh, uh, labor is coming to Estonia from the east, indeed they are integrating to the Russian speaking community and this is a reality. And this is a problem we have to face to end the segregation in Tallinn, educational system. But the truth is also but that uh, I do define Estonia as a nation state, not an, as an immigrant state, as a concept. Yeah. But I do understand that Estonia, the majority of Estonian people uh, have to remain Estonians uh, if they identify culturally themselves as Estonians. One the people sentence. are welcome here uh, as, uh, well, to establish their life here, but we know also that there is a certain gravity point of also to defend the student culture and society. And that is an issue that we keep also have to keep in mind. Just one, uh, just one small, sentence, really. Just a small remark. Well, to, according to these sentences, I'm also an immigrant, a labor immigrant. My parents are, a lot of my friends are. I'm studying in a Russian kindergarten, in a Russian school, and here I am now. Thank you. Uh, just, just a small remark concerning to the investment politics. He mentioned that this really is a problem. The five Estonian a unicorns, unfortunately, are, are not a very much related to Estonia as all of the investors are from outside, from Germany, from China, from America, from London. And actually, all the money the unicorns are, are producing is floating to some other countries. Yeah. So to promote the investment, culture and politics inside of the Estonia is also one point. Uh, you're, you're partly true, but if you look at TransferWise, uh, PipeDrive, and so on, and uh, uh, sorry, Wise, how many jobs they are creating in Estonia? Then uh, this is also the tax money and the people coming here. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I it's it's. I think it's quite hard to find investors um, uh, in Estonia besides uh, the uh, Estonian easy, easy. mafia. Thank you. We are. Um, uh, giving one very last remark, Mr. Reinsel also wants to leave, so... Um. Yeah, and, and for the last remark, let's make it very brief. And there was also a question on the audience, which was, what does a successful Tallinn look like to you? So in your last remark, just very briefly, in less than a sentence, what does a successful Tallinn <laughs> look like to you? And perhaps we can start... Yeah, one sentence, we can start there. Looks like an intelligent guy. <laughs> Or I mean, what? Uh, or I mean, what is the point of the question? What, what, does, what, what is, what is a successful talent? To you? In what kind of talent do you want to live, and your party wants to uh, see as a successful city? Every kind of a skilled labor. No, it's. I don't get the question actually quite clearly. Vision for talent. Sorry, let's continue. One word, friendly. I would like Tallinn to become more friendly towards um, towards the world, towards the people from different parts of the city, towards new technology, and I would like that we all feel more friendly towards each other, no matter what's the social background, the ethnical background, the uh, sex orientation or whatnot. Friendship okay. and thank friendly. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think that uh, we have here in uh, Estonia the, uh, the highest number of startups uh, per capita in Europe and the second highest number of unicorns per capita in the world after Israel. There is no reason why in, uh, in due course we, this city, could not be the richest city in Europe, the highest GDP per capita in Europe <laughs> and the greenest city in Europe. That's what I think our long-term vision is. That's a great vision, thank you. Susu. Uh, my vision of Tallinn is um, that it's uh, friendly, caring, buzzing, uh, very green city, uh, modern city, inviting and um, safe. Thank you. Urmas, I'll let you go. Wealthy, cozy, honestly governed. Thank you. All of the above minus Ekre <laughs> and imagine <laughs> and if you can again in that mythical November afternoon be outside, send your kids outside and say come back until supper and you feel safe about it because they can roam around the city safely and that you can tell your friends in sunny California 
that yes, I've made the right move and so <laughs> should you. Thank you, Raymond, let's wrap it up. Yeah, I think, I think one of the advantages that we have is that we can actually be a very, very green and, and environmentally friendly uh, space surrounded by beautiful, beautiful nature. But to get to that, uh, I think we need a, a well-run city and a coalition government in the city. And, uh, and I'm working towards having the social Dems in that, in that government. So, so at the moment, I'm, I'm thinking pretty short term. In October, please come vote, vote for a coalition government and get the social Dems in that government. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give a big applause. Uh, just as a last remark, there, there was also a question outside of the debate, who and how you can vote. So uh, just to brief, uh, quickly cover that as well. Uh, uh, in the local elections, which will take place in next, uh, next Saturday, the 17th of October, uh, the pre-election, which means uh, starts in uh, next Monday, so the... Uh, yeah. And uh, basically, and you are, um, as you know, you can vote online in Estonia. You have all the information on the valimizet.ee page. It is in Estonian, English, and Russian. And uh, basically, you can vote if you're over 18. If uh, 16. Sorry, 16. <laughs> um, uh, living in Estonia as a permanent resident, Estonian citizen uh, from EU or any other country. So please... Uh, Exactly. So, so uh, long-term or permanent residence is necessary. Uh, you can find all the information on the website and you can vote both online and um, at the polling stations on the day. So please do uh, use your right to vote for a better Tallinn, for a better future. And uh, Philly Joe's is kind enough to let us stay here. You can mingle, talk to each other, and the bar will stay open. So um, if any of the candidates uh, um, have time and energy to stay here and talk to the people, uh, you are welcome to ask them questions privately as well. Thank you.